Hey everybody, thank you for joining me for another one man review. Today I've got Sisters by Raina Telgemeier. Uh, this is one of four of her books that I picked up on a, on a recent run to my favorite second, uh, second hand used bookstore, Second and Charles. I've been, obviously anyone who's interested in comics I would assume has been hearing about Raina Telgemeier's work over the last, last however many years. Um, probably the best selling comics out there right now, I think. The, and, uh, the kids lit graphic novels have just been getting a lot of well deserved attention. I hadn't really looked at many of them because it was like, well, they're books for kids, but I've been picking up more of them, enjoying them. And so I found her stuff, um, used and had to get them. The only one I didn't get was her latest book, Guts. So out of Sisters, Smile, Ghosts, and drama. This is the one I enjoyed the most. Smile is about uh, autobiographical about Raina having had some teeth knocked out and false teeth and getting braces and stuff. Ghost was kind of a goofy story about a town full of ghosts and, and a girl who has, uh, I think it was cystic fibrosis. Um, didn't really like that one. Drama was, you know, kids in drama club being kids. So th they're all good. But um, I found this one the most relatable. I think when you do autobiographical work, the success is going to be usually how people relate to it. You know, if they kind of share your experiences, they're going to feel more connected. Um, I don't think any of her work is like, especially the autobiographical work, I don't think it's the kind of thing where you experience something so crazy in life that, you know, you need to make people be aware of it. Like, what she went through with the braces was extra intense, but it's not like Harvey Picard's, like, our cancer here, where you're really giving people a window into, in, into something that they hope they never experience. So, her work, I think, was more about how much I could relate to it, how much was similar, and that's what Sisters was. Um, obviously, I'm not a sister, I was a brother, I, I have a younger brother, but I could relate to being a sibling, and I could relate to um, being the older sibling and then being the artist kid. And then in this book, they take a road trip. Mom takes the three kids, actually. They have a younger brother. Takes the three kids on a road trip from California to Colorado. And they go, obviously, through a route that I've driven a number of times because they check off some of the same places I've been. So that was interesting. Um, formally, I like this little convention they have in the book of present day stuff has white backgrounds and then to make everything feel kind of hazy like a memory um, her memories of dealing with her sister she really wants a sister and then when she gets one they wind up being super competitive and they, they don't really like each other obviously but there's always told with like this um, creamy color behind I don't think it's a cream paper but it's a cream color that's printed on no it's definitely not paper um, but it's printed on everything to give it like a haze of memory. So I really like that. Um, my favorite moments in the book, like I said, were ones that I could relate to because I've actually been to a lot of these places or there are things that I, I've been through myself. Um, so one of them is they, they drive across the border into Nevada and her sister reads that it's the nickname is the Silver State. And Raina says, more like the Brown State. And her sister says, oh, the burnt sienna state, or closer to the raw umber state, or maybe beige, khaki. And if you've ever driven through Nevada, that is, that is so true. Um, where they're at, too, they're, they're still in California here. Obviously, they're up in the mountains. And when you, if you're on Highway 80 and you cross Nevada into California, it goes from being the ugliest like most persistent screensaver. You're just driving through a screensaver of ugly for eight hours. It's like the same thing over and over. And within one minute of crossing the border, two minutes at most, you're in like the Sierra Nevadas and it's just beautiful forest. Um, every time I lived in Michigan and I would drive back and forth along Highway 80 and every time I crossed Nevada into California, it was like, ah, oh, you know, I'm back, I'm back to the beautiful stuff. That, where I came from in California is pretty dry and ugly too, but, um, it is very, very impactful change. And so going the other way is impactful in the other way. You go, ugh. Um, 
And then I, when I moved to Virginia at some point and I had to drive from California to Virginia in three and a half, four days, and I left about six in the evening. I forget what day it was, like a Wednesday or Thursday. And I drove, I was pushing as far as I could and I got super tired and I was in the middle of nowhere in Nevada and I had to stop in Lovelock, Nevada. So they, they have to stop there on a rainy night. And there was, there was a like, you know, six bedroom motel or something. And I knew I wasn't going to find anywhere to sleep, uh, anywhere else anytime soon. So I stopped there and got this nasty room. They're at a campsite, but I got a nasty room. So that was funny. I've been there. It was ugly. And then this is true too. Uh, it did wasn't raining the night there, but when I woke up in the morning, I came out and there was a dead bird out right outside of my door <laughs> at the motel. So that cracked me up. Um, and they, they say area code 666, I presume. So that definitely matched my experience of Lovelock, Nevada. I really relate to this scene being the art kid with the headphones on. She gets a Walkman. And it's just like her favorite thing ever because she can use it to block everything out. It's not even that her family's arguing or anything. It's just the baby's crying, dad's cheering at the, the baseball, mom's asking, shouting for help, the baby sister's crying. Um, growing up and still, I, I struggled with a condition that's now being called misophonia. It's basically some kind of neurological condition where you don't have the ability to background noise in the way most people do. So at least the things like really being unable to block out people chewing food and, you know, we get really irritated by noises. And it was always very difficult for me to concentrate. So I always use music to block everything out. I, I don't know why with, if noise irritates you, you listen to the kind of music I tend to listen to, which is super loud and fast and obnoxious. But I think it creates like a good wall, a good barrier between me and the world. And I, I still do that a lot. So I really identify with that and how much she relies on that, that damn Walkman to deal with, with the, her environment. And they, in the book, they're living in a very tight little apartment situation too. So I would have lost my mind in that, that kind of situation. Um, here's, they finally get to Colorado and meet their cousins. They're going to visit their cousins and they're asking, Raina, what, what do you like? And she says, oh, I like comics. And I said, oh, really? Like Batman, Hulk, X-Men? And she says, I like Calvin and Hobbes for better, for worse, Fox shot. And they cut her off and say, Psh, those aren't real comics. And I love that because there seems to be, I think now people are getting more savvy to the fact that they're the same thing. But I remember growing up and, and knowing that they were the same thing, but everyone else treated them differently. Like my parents would tell me, that they couldn't read comic books because they didn't understand how to follow the pictures and they didn't understand the word balloons. But then my parents both love Calvin and Hobbes and both love for better or for worse. And I never made sense to me. Like you guys can read a comic there. Why can't you, you know, read like the comic books that I'm talking about? Um, so I like that. And then I really just love her uh, shouting out for better or for worse. I think it's probably the most, um, I don't want to say underrated, but just kind of under talked about, underappreciated, maybe underrated. The, the people that know it know how good it is, but it's just not something I hear talked about, like with Calvin and Hobbes or Peanuts or something like that. And I really think it should be, and not just talked about with the greatest comic strips, but I think it should be recognized as one of the greatest works, like seriously, one of the top works of all time in the medium of comics it's it's an absolutely stunning thing where it's one story told over 20 some odd years that she was working on the strip of one family with the characters aging in real time dealing with real life situations i remember a criticism of it being that it was kind of like too kitschy too too i don't know like boring white america or something um, I, a couple years ago, reread the whole thing in a, in a digital version, and it was really ahead of its time. It was dealing with very dramatic moments in characters' lives, things that were, shouldn't have been controversial, but were controversial in the mid 90s. Um, just so many moments in there that are really impactful moments. 
masterful job of aging characters like day to day without anyone ever noticing a big jump. But it, it's really a masterpiece of comics. I know IDW is doing reprints, but I just don't hear people, you know, this is a, a strip that should be winning like lifetime achievement awards and, and stuff like that. And you just don't hear it in the conversation. And, and I don't know why. I don't know if it's like too wholesome or something like that. But I really love that, that she shouts that out. And I want to shout it out. Everybody should read that strip from the very first strip to the very last strip. And you're getting something equivalent to, like, Cerebus, in my opinion. Um, a story that unfolded over 20-some-odd years. So thank you, Randy Telegmeyer, for shouting that out and hopefully getting some kids to go look that up and read that. This panel I relate to especially because I just recently flipped to the other side of this situation. Um having had Tori's son Jack here for the summer and now I'm the boring adult but here's Raina listening to the adults talk boring adult stuff money when grandpa was alive last will and testament politics religion raising your children wrong I remember very clearly a number of situations especially one night we went out to a pizza parlor and the adults spent the whole time talking about their doctor's office visits and their medications and I thought oh my god like I don't ever want to be that you know i don't ever want like there's way more interesting stuff to talk about than what pills you're taking um and then this summer on the flip side of it you know jack's here and he just wants to wrestle and talk about video games and i'm like bro i gotta work i gotta take your mom to this doctor appointment you know and i became that thing for the first time and it's really a bummer but you know it's it's funny how that stuff changes so i think that's probably a pretty universal experience. Um, so overall, I highly recommend this book. The other ones like Medium recommend, I guess. They're good, but they didn't impact me so much. But this one's really good. There's some good emotional content in it that I'm skipping because I don't want to give give away anything really about the story. Um, but it is a story about siblings. And, you know, they have their tender moments, but they still pretty much just kind of hate each other. So with that in mind... I found this to be kind of hilarious. She has, Raina has these pictures here, and they're kind of presented as, like, um, sweet in a way. Like, oh, look at me and my sister. But it's really, this here is the last image you see in the book other than her author profile and selling her other books. And this is Raina and her sister Mara and then their brother. And the caption says, um, here we are around the, the time that this book took place. Amara, her sister, had just won first place in an art contest. They both do art throughout the book, and they're kind of competitive about it, I think. So Amara had just won first place in an art contest that I had gotten only an honorable mention for a few years prior. Um, I'm hiding my jealousy well. And I don't know, like, I don't know if this... if if this was well intended and just like I'm being cynical or if it is a playful um, like sibling rivalry jab or if it's like kind of this an intentional catty bitchy moment but I feel like she's I feel like her sister has Amara has talked many times in her life about how much she hates her face in that picture because it's not a flattering picture it's like she's doing this big goofy neck back scrunched up like it's just a bad picture so I feel like she intentionally took a picture that her sister hated and made it like the last picture in a book about their rivalry and how they don't get along. Um, it kind of threw her sister under the bus. I hope it's playful. I hope they have a good adult relationship. And her sister's like, man, I can't believe you published that damn photo, you know, and they chuckle about it. But especially with this last thing saying like i'm hiding my jealousy well you know and she's got a nice smile with, and everything with her braces uh but this like kind of undercuts itself it's like you're not hiding your jealousy well at all you're you're putting your sister on blast for her goofy face in one of the best-selling comics of all time uh, so i found that i found that to add an extra little bit of uh, comedy and punch to the end of the book but I don't know. I don't know what her intentions are. So definitely check this book out. Also, please remember 
This is a misprinted copy of a book I did with Dave Sim, printed by Sean Robinson of Living the Line. It's uh, We're working on getting a proper printing of it that's not missing some of the artwork out there. So this should be on bookstore shelves, comic store shelves, and online to order soon. Please give it an order. Go down to your local bookstore, your shop, and pre-order it. Get on Amazon and pre-order it. Um, most of the arts by Dave Sim, absolutely astonishing work. I did the later chunks of the book. I won't brag about my own art, but Sean took the insanely fine detailed art that we did and reproduced it as well as could possibly be printed. Um, I, I was actually astonished seeing my own stuff in print, seeing it print this well, just, just absolutely blew me away. So this is a beautiful book. Definitely make sure that you, you get a copy reserved now. The, the print run is, you know, we have the orders in and, and we're running out of the first print run already. We're getting close to selling them out. So make sure to get your copy of The Strange Death of Alex Raymond reserved today. Thanks for joining me. Take it away, Jack. What's the